Hello everyone, my name is Darwin. Is this the future science fiction promised me? Hi Darwin, are we ready to go see Alex? Robots in the workplace? I know just the person to ask. I am T. Lee and I work in engineering communications at the National Science Foundation. Come in. Good morning. Good morning, T. Good, Good to see you. How are you? Today, I get to talk to Dr. Alex Leonessa and a special guest. Dr. Leonessa specializes in general and age-related disabilities engineering at the NSF. Alex and I head over to the NSF library with our special guest. So, Alex, what, what are robots? Well, robots uh, are a machine, ultimately. I mean, if you look at the definition of robots, as is uh, recognized in the literature, robots are machines that are useful, uh, you know, to mankind. Right. So a machine that is useless, uh, just by definition, it wouldn't be a robot. Ultimately, you know, a robot needs to have several components in order to be recognized uh, as such. It needs to be able to interact with the environment, uh, so measure the environment, interact with the environment, and have some cognitive skills. Okay. Then, of course, the funny part is that, according to that definition, any human would be a robot as well, right? <laughs> wow. So this is Darwin. Uh, this is Darwin, yes. So this was uh, designed and developed uh, at uh, Virginia Tech uh, over you know, numerous year effort uh, from, uh, from students uh, from the uh, Romela. Romela is Robotics and Mechanism Lab, who actually now is not at Virginia Tech anymore, but um, the students still are. And uh, after development, it was uh, acquired by, by a company, and now this company produced them uh, and commercialized them. So anybody can buy one of these platforms and be used by many universities uh, for research purposes. Um, as far as just general design, uh, mm -hmm. why, why kind of a human design? Well, this particular robot was designed originally, his purpose was uh, to play soccer. Okay. And so this, uh, you're looking at uh, one of the World Cup winner for the robotic soccer competition, RoboCup. Yes, go. And uh, to participate to that kind of competition, there are certain requirements on the size, the shape, the motion of the robot itself. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why, you know, it was designed in this form. So Darwin, uh, um, is able to stand, see a soccer ball, uh, go there and kick it in the in a desired direction. Of course, uh, now is used for many other areas of research, but it was originally designed to see a red soccer ball in front of him and uh, decide, you know, what was the best trajectory to reach the soccer ball and then kick it. Of course, out of the soccer ball, the main thing that they would see was the color red, uh, at least in the way that it was programmed originally. And uh, you can see other things as well, but it was designed to, to recognize the color red and then follow the color red, which means that if you're wearing red shoes and you walk down the hall, it's just going to follow you because this is the color red and it's going to think that that's a soccer ball that it needs to get to. Um, the challenges for designing a humanoid robot, what mm -hmm. does that teach you about disabilities in people, mm -hmm. uh, things along those lines? So a robot uh, um, is, uh, is a platform that uh, encompasses many areas of engineering, right? So there is the mechanical design, of course, there is the electrical design for all of the wires, the power, computer uh, engineering for the computer system uh, that is behind uh, you know, the way that the robot uh, uh, functions. Uh, and then there is all of the sensing. So, so now, of course, none of this sensor is as sophisticated as our own five sensors. Uh, and that's why we need so many sensors, uh, because all together they can never duplicate uh, what uh, human uh, senses can actually do. There are uh, principal investigators at National Science Foundation that have developed, for example, you know, a very sophisticated uh, touch uh, sensing capabilities that not only allows the robot uh, to sense, you know, whenever they touch something, if it's hot, it's cold, it's soft, it's hard, but actually can duplicate that kind of uh, uh, sense in prosthesis to provide amputees with the, uh, recovering those kind of feelings uh, as well. But in building a humanoid robot, you know, you start facing some challenges uh, that then you realize uh, how, you know, the human body actually is uh, subject to the same kind of constraints. And I'll give you an example. As soon as you start working in uh, humanoid robotics, you immediately realize that how the knee is perhaps one of the most critical components in designing a humanoid robot. Wow. And, um, and as soon as you start doing that, you realize why, you know, we have so many problems with our knees, right? Especially if you start uh, running and walking a lot and do a lot of sports, a lot of activities on your knees. And so that's for robots. So actually the knee is perhaps one of the most difficult parts uh, 
to design uh, in a robot. Of course, you know, there are many challenges, uh, but uh, at least from a mechanical and uh, power, you know, torque providing uh, point of view, you know, the knee is uh, among the most challenging. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, you talk about the usefulness of robots mm -hmm. to humans kind of driving the design. Um, what, what do human needs kind of say about robot design? Well, in terms of uh, fields where robots can be useful, you know, I mean, in general, anything where we don't want, you know, to risk human life that would be dangerous uh, for uh, human to intervene, it would be desirable. Uh, I'll give you an example, you know, firefighting, right? I mean, if we can have a robot that can go into a building with, uh, you know, blazing flames going through and go there with a hose and start extinguishing the fire while, you know, the firemen outside, uh, you know, directing him and giving instruction, that would be desirable. Yeah. Search and rescue, emergency response, and other possible areas. Of course, we have robots that uh, can uh, vacuum your floors <laughs> and they can cut your grass and, and so on and so forth. So. Um, kind of shifting from the more physical needs that robots can help, mm -hmm. what about, um, I know there are robots designed to interact with children, Absolutely. Uh, more social mm -hmm, uh, needs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, social robotics, uh, that's, uh, that's the, the name that goes by. I mean, it's been around for a while, but in the last year perhaps, you know, perhaps a couple of years and has really skyrocketed. I mean, there's been a lot of interest in, in social robotics. And that is exactly what you're talking about, how the robot interacts with a human, right? Yeah. And how can a robot help, uh, you know, uh, children with learning, especially in, uh, in spite of potential learning disabilities, interact with, uh, you know, uh, children with uh, autism or other kind of, uh, you know, disabilities, cognitive disabilities, for example but it can also help uh, rehabilitation. So, you know, after you had uh, a surgery or an accident or something has happened and you go back home and uh, now there are robots that can come home with you and can wow. encourage you and uh, criticize you if you don't do enough. I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing how that area of research has really uh, developed and has uh, become, you know, very useful. Wow. Uh, one of the places where you kind of see robots uh, being portrayed um, on the good and bad side, I mm -hmm. guess, is in the movies. Do you of have course. a favorite uh, favorite movie robot, good or bad? Uh, Short Circuit. Ah, yes. <laughs> Classic. Yes. Yeah, I love Short Circuit. And of course, nowadays, if you look at that robot, it looks outdated, but it's still, uh, it's still, a, great, it's still a great movie. Um, do you think that maybe uh, a conscious robot, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, do you think that might arise as a product of... Um, of research for addressing human needs. In terms of artificial intelligence, you know, we are making a lot of progress in terms of having the robot uh, self-learn from the environment, from interacting with the environment. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll definitely see more and more of that. And uh, I'm sure that we will be surprised, you know. Now, in terms of having a consciousness, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think, frankly, that we're even trying to do that, right? right? I mean, that's not an area that we are interested in uh, making a robot conscious. But, you know, in terms of learning uh, and being able to interact in a way that ultimately, you know, in many, many years from today, it would be hard to distinguish from actually a human, uh, a human being. Uh, that is a direction that we are definitely pursuing. Okay. And uh, kind of looking many, many years mm -hmm. from now, uh, how long before our first robot president? Uh, that's yes. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs> and is working with robots still that kind of fun for you? How is uh, yeah, how is that engagement I mean, it's changed? Fun is challenging. It's frustrating. <laughs> it's tiring. But if it wasn't fun, we wouldn't do it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, one of those areas where you get a lot of disciplines from engineering and now even uh, from social sciences, uh, right. you know, all together. So it's a perfect learning opportunity for students. Uh, I work uh, with the students from middle school, I actually even elementary school, middle school and high school all the times. Uh, and they're always fascinated with, uh, with uh, what robots can do. And they're always asked questions of what else he can do. And uh, so it's it's a it's a wonderful platform uh, for uh, learning engineering until uh, you know no long ago, but now even other areas again uh, you know like social sciences, right. uh, and uh, we should definitely pursue it uh, you know for this kind of activities. So robots on the soccer field, mm -hmm. robots in the workplace. Um, there's probably people that feel that they could help and work with humans as well as 
fears of being eventually replaced by them? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, if you look at some of the literature from 10, 15 years ago, by today, we should just be home, you know, enjoying our lives and robots who should do all of their work for us, right? Uh, and uh, which hasn't happened like that. Uh, but uh, that doesn't uh, mean that robots, uh, you know, haven't taken, uh, you know, more and more, uh, you know, responsibilities and jobs around uh, the world in general, you know, relieving us from some of those jobs that uh, we don't want to do. So the way I see it, and this is just my personal opinion, uh, is that, you know, by introducing robots, you know, in our lives, yes, they do take some jobs, you know, away from us, but they create new jobs, right. you know? Probably important to remember that as robots develop, uh, humans are still developing and, and uh, right. I mean, creating new opportunities. in the areas of research, you know, and absolutely. So, uh, back to the future promised mm -hmm. us hoverboards in mm -hmm. 2015. <laughs> sure. In 10 years, uh -huh. where do you think Darwin will be? In 10 years, well, that's... Uh, you know, I really need to pull out my crystal ball for that. Well, I know that in 2050 we are going to be playing soccer, right? right. So that is, uh, <laughs> that is what, 35 years from today. In 10 years from today, again, we are going to have robots in our homes. Even before 10 years from now, we will have uh, cars, you know, with no steering wheel, right? Uh, and, uh, right. you know, and that is, uh, and that is an area, for example, that we are even ready today for it, uh, but uh, not socially. I mean, people are not ready to get into a car and have no driver in it. But that doesn't mean that we cannot do it, it's just that slowly we need to get used to it. I mean, having refrigerators that uh, remind you that you're out of milk and you need to go and buy some, or perhaps even they place the order online and it gets delivered to your home, and you didn't even know that you were out of milk and all of a sudden there is fresh new milk in your fridge, you know, mail delivery and uh, pizza delivery, right? Uh, so there is a lot of talking about that as well. So it's going to be something that you're going to see around, you know, and uh, you didn't know, realize that there are those robots because you're so used to it. Yeah. And that, that is uh, something that we are going to see in 10 years. I would Sounds say. like it'll uh, create some uh, leisure time. I'll start planning my vacation now. Absolutely, yes, you should do that. Well, thank you, Alex, for taking the time to uh, talk Absolutely. to us and uh, the folks about robotics here. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Very nice meeting you. Thank you, Darwin. Hey, Darwin, you ready to go home and play some more soccer? Bye-bye.